Hey everyone, Trevor Daly with MagMod. Hey, thanks for joining me for another How I Shot It. Today, I am excited. I have Joss and Tree Woodsmith. Guys, thanks so much for joining. Awesome. Yay, thanks for having we're us. Glad this to is be great. Here. <laughs> yeah. You know, you guys are so creative. And again, I always tell people, I get a chance to look through the images before we actually start these episodes. And there, I, I literally, I, I emailed you guys back and I'm like, this is like a like treasure trove of gold right here that we're going to be going through. So I'm really excited about this episode. It might be a little bit longer because we have so many behind the scenes and videos of you guys actually doing this stuff. Um, but again, it's just like every shot, there's just so much good information. So I'm really excited about doing this. So. Awesome. Thanks for having us. <laughs> but before we jump into those images, uh, would you guys mind just telling everyone where we can find you? Maybe let's start with your Instagram page. I'll pull that up and then we can go to your website if that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy. Joss and Tree. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, that's the beauty this of, is J of that. This is J-O-S-A-N-D-Tree.com or yep. with Instagram. And yep. I love yeah, it. We so I have I have your Instagram up here. So at Joss and Tree. So I want uh, you guys have such cool, unique names too. I just love it. Um, and then, and of course, you have your link tree here, which would go back to your website as well. Should we go yeah. check that out real quick? Sure. sure. So Let's make sure it's working. Ah, uh, look at I was already jumping over here on your education side. I definitely want to ask you guys about this, by the way. But let's I'm going to jump over to your galleries real quick. And you guys have just so many crazy, awesome shots. This is insane, you guys. D tell everyone where to find you guys. Where are you guys based out of? Uh, well, we're in Portland, Oregon, currently overcast and chilly outside, but um, our our cat is next to us. This is our home office. Elvis is our cat. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're here quite a bit throughout the year, but also are traveling all over the world. Um, yeah, we keep circling back to Portland. We love it. Um, but we've had a chance to really see so many destination weddings and we feel so fortunate to be able to do that um, um and every time we do do that it's usually a multi-day uh, destination wedding which is super fun and exhausting and exhausting yeah. yeah but you get the real documentary feel when you're there for a little bit longer than a day yeah so we're we're up in in portland but we're also in california where i grew up uh quite a bit and yeah and all over that's awesome i by the way uh, Tree, where'd you grow up? In Ojai, in Ventura County. Okay. I, I was born in the Oakland area, so that's why. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, I lived okay. there in middle school, just inland from Oakland in Pleasanton, in the East hey. Bay. Yeah. Well, I, I will say, you guys, you I do love seeing your travels all over the place. And I love how you mentioned you do kind of this documentary style, but I also find that um, you guys use light in that style. So it's like you, you, and that's what I look forward to showing people in these images is that you kind of have this, this style that flows, but at the same time you get this light, it, it all comes together so nicely. I just absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Before we jump into that though, I do want to ask you, I had it up here just a second ago. You got an education site, you got some workshops. I know you guys have done some crazy workshops in the past, like in Mexico. And I, I think you've done something in Italy, if I'm not mistaken, but anyhow, you have, it looks like you have something coming up in 2024 and i see yes. dates coming you have to tell yeah, us about this. What is it's this be, all about? yeah it's gonna be released really soon like within mm -hmm. the few weeks the date <laughs> and it's most likely going to be in march um here in oregon yeah and particularly we chose to frame it around winter weddings because we know the challenge of lighting mm -hmm. in winter weddings and and this really demands us to step up and to use our light and creative ways you know just working in the dark with technology alone is, is tough enough let alone mm -hmm. the, the fleeting moments that are happening in front of you and the weather and how to work as a team <laughs> yeah yeah and so yeah. we think that's a really good challenge for everybody a challenge and also for us working and, and photographing weddings during the winter is spread out our mm -hmm. work we only take on a certain amount of weddings a year and we don't want all of them to be in summer so that we can enjoy our summer here and our friends and family. So yes. winter weddings has allowed us to do that. So it's yeah. spread our weddings throughout the year. Yeah, it diversifies the imagery too, mm -hmm. you know, so people can see a wide variety of, of different settings yep. and lighting scenarios. Yeah. I love that. And unfortunately here in Arizona, our winter weddings is golf courses. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes it's dead grass golf courses. Sometimes it's green grass, depending on how. What about Flagstaff? Okay. What about Flagstaff? That's true. There is some snow up in Flagstaff. I, I, 
Uh, before we jump into the images, though, I did. I love how you guys have kind of like your broken down day two, day three. You have this, uh, you know, mastering difficult light, the silver bullet of OCF. Like, there's some really fun things here that I'm just like, oh, I could definitely learn a lot at this. This is really cool. So, um, hats off to you guys for putting this together. It looks really, really neat. Yay, yeah, we think that, that that you know the, the the high performance teamwork is a really key point also. Uh -huh. um, so how to work as a team can be really challenging because it really pushes all your buttons when you when you're in the in, when you're kind of in a thrown chaotic situation. Well, and also um, when our last workshop in Mexico, a lot of people were telling us they work alone, and we were like, maybe you should try to have a team member come with you. Like, mm -hmm. why don't you start trying that and see what that ends up feeling like for you? And everybody is just like rocking it now because they have someone coming with them that can assist them and maybe take some of the pressure off and allow for more creativity and also light real moments because yeah. now they have someone helping. Yeah. yeah, no, it makes sense to have, I, I need to do a better job of that. I tend to, to, jump around so much with second shooters. I need to get more consistent with the people that I bring every time. So good tip guys. Um, love it. Hey, can we jump right into these images? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to talk about them. So this first image that I'm going to pull up is, <laughs> is the XL is actually yeah. is the video. So I, I noticed it's the, the Magma XL. It looks like this first image we're going to talk about. You guys actually use the, the new XLs. Is that right? Out, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, and we put it on the the, the mag ring. Yeah, in this uh, case, yeah, uh, with a GT two hundred go uh, the Geek the Geek Kodo GT two hundred. Okay, and uh, yeah, we put a, a quarter CTO gel in there, and okay. it's super solid this way. It's really solid. Yeah, uh, it doesn't feel like it's gonna flop around too much. And but so also we are investing in in bigger lights, and so that's yeah. this was what we were doing until we get our new light. Yeah. I love it. I, yeah. I actually, I really enjoy using the MagSphere and Mag Grids uh, on the XL on the Mag Ring. I actually, I, I find it even this weekend. I was shooting a wedding, and me and my we uh, the other shooter, we both had flashes up in there. We were both using grids. You know, the XL. Yeah. Grid stuff, it yeah. 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 In in this scenario here, we're like, I'm setting up. I'm anticipating the couple. Um, I wanted to to light them from above because I wanted them to look up into the into this cathedral of trees. And we just shot this two days ago. Wow. Yeah, this was Saturday. This was Saturday. This is Saturday night right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool. And, uh, so the, the camera's on a on a um, Gikoto new uh, tripod, which is uh -huh. really important for this type of shot because it, it's a long four second exposure. And here I am lighting it up, <laughs> trying, to light, trying to do the behind the scenes myself. But the couple right there is walking towards me. And this is a real moment of them walking towards me. They don't know what's happening. Uh -huh. So I set this all up, anticipating them to walking into the scene. I was wondering where you were. I was photographing yeah. the dance floor. <laughs> yeah, you can hear the music in this video too. It's like in the background. And, uh -huh. But yeah, well, you know, you get you get into these situations. You're not quite sure what's going to happen, but you kind of get the probability is there. Yeah. And so then you kind of make the find the the tweaks as they walk into the situation. Yeah. That's cool. So, so you had that you had that one light over the top, and then you had it looked like one light that was gelled behind. Is that right? Yep, one light gelled behind them for the rim light behind them. Um, and then, you know, adjusting the A was the XL, uh, the new XL, my mag mod up there. Mm -hmm. And so that was my A and then B was behind them. So I could adjust those those uh, intensities separately. Gotcha, gotcha. And I like how you had them looking up. So now I'm going to bring up the photo so everybody can see this image. And there's the, there's, so actually it looks like you, you probably shot it a few different ways, but I love this one. I love that how you said the Cathedral of Trees too. That's in, that's in, Fantastic. It literally said at the ceremony spot, as you walk in, it said Tree Cathedral. Oh, really? <laughs> so yeah. Cool. And actually, right after the ceremony, we took a drone photo. We put the drone up in the trees and, and photographed down on them, laying laying in this, like, really tight thing. Of yeah, trees, the, the leading, so. line, the leading lines of all those those trunks, you know, yeah. guide your, your eyes right to them. So... Um, the clients have not seen any of these photos yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you know what I think makes this really stand out too, is you mentioned that you did this four second exposure and had you not done the four second exposure, you probably would not have seen those trees lit up so well. I mean, you would have saw maybe where the flash would have hit a little bit on the bottom or something, but you have, and then you have the sky. That's just that beautiful Royal blue, you know, well, that, and it was and, also a full moon and it hadn't risen yet. So uh, like 
part of that, I think, is the sky being illuminated because I believe the full moon was about to rise. Yeah, and the lights from the from the reception are actually coming over and hitting the trees. Mm -hmm. So the ambient light there from the reception. Yeah, you're getting kind of both. Oh, cool. Yeah, I love that, you guys. Very, very cool. Good stuff. I bet there's a lot of great shots from this this series here. So. Yeah, Sweet. well, I think you're gonna. You have two more from oh, this right. on Saturday night. <laughs> oh, oh, from the same couple. That's so awesome. Oh yeah, this is the same couple here. Well, I'll play this video here. So tell us about this one. Sure. Yeah. So okay. So they just wanted to take the time and walk down into where their ceremony was because they mm -hmm. were having this super emotional moment of connecting and reflecting back on the whole bay, and I'm like just scrambling around trying to figure out what to do. And, I, and the first thing that came to my mind is I really like to get some things close to the lens right up front to the lens to create that depth of field yeah and so all of the lights meant a lot to them and so these these market lights i just decided to shoot through them and they and in the end you can kind of see in the final image eventually that all these lights kind of represent these roadways as if they're like, like these paths like lead, a path. these organic paths leading to their relationship and and you know, of course, technically, you have to expose for the hot lights here. So exposing for the, the hot uh, market lights first and dialing in the ISO. I think this is 100 ISO, actually. And wow. uh, it was a little bit more like, let's see, that was a, uh, I, think, I think I still shot it at, at 2.8, actually. Um, but it was a 16 millimeter lens and it shot 100 ISO. And I think it was only like, but it was like one third tenth of a second and you're using the xl here i'm using the xl the same setup because yeah. i had it already on on my uh on the the stand on both of them I, I just carried it with me and followed them down there and, and it set up the kind of the same scenario but it had a different look because i was shooting through the different um the the dimension here of all the lights you know so this is after the, oh. oh sorry i was gonna say because i wasn't there i was on the dance floor was this after the cathedral photo this is right after the cathedral okay. photo and you yeah. followed me down there. And then that's when I made it down. I yeah. was like, where are they? <laughs> but I had to climb way up on this, on the, on, on the, their, what do you call it? The arch for their, for the ceremony. I'm, I'm uh -huh. up there with one foot balancing. Oh, you were on the, on with the, the other, other arm with what my camera yeah. trying to shoot wow. through that. Yeah. You know, the altar had this like gate thing around it. Yeah. yeah. And what's interesting is in the last video, when you show them walking up, you can actually see these lights like behind them where their where their ceremony took place and so it's interesting to see that and then okay we went from here now we're going to transition over to this and i like how you got up there and used those lights in the foreground and stuff super yeah. cool stuff yeah 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 really well good. and then the next one the next one right we just continued because so trees down there now uh -huh. and oh and i and i happen to have like the last sip of my wine glass with me and uh -huh. The DJ stopped now. The party is pretty much over, but we're all staying on the property. So, um, yeah, I'd had my my glass of wine, and and all of a sudden, I'm just seeing the reflections in it, and I start playing around with it, and you know, exhausted, <laughs> end of the day kind of. Oh, look, we can play. Um, and they were just having a really sweet moment, um, last moment of the night, really, last photo of the night. Yeah, and that XL also has the the uh, I think it's a forty degree grid on it also, so it's more focused. Mm. And I had never tried this before; it just happened. Like I took the last of a wine and then saw all those market lights reflecting in the glass, and just started playing around. And Joss was like, "Ooh, that looks good. Let's keep doing that." Yeah, yeah. dang, yep. you guys, that is cool. Yeah, wow. I may have to keep trying that with different types of light. I yeah. think at one point you said you wanted two wine glasses. I think. Yes. Been, yeah. <laughs> no, I would have never. So it's interesting to me because uh, oftentimes I'll look at, you know, like behind the scenes shots and I'll try to imagine what it would look like. This is not how I would imagine. This is really, really cool. That's I why that. I had to keep playing around with it. And I'm, <laughs> I look forward to playing with it more with like maybe different glasses, more than one glass and just, mm -hmm. and with different lights. So these lights look like this because it's the market lights. But what if, you know, we have like a totally different lighting scenario. So. Yeah, and you really, you know, with a backlight, we like to try to have the bounce, the light bounce off somebody and bounce it back into them. But sometimes that, that, that gets a little tricky because you got to shoot a lot of it to, in order to, to stumble into that yeah. happening. And, but with that foreground light, 
uh, it, it just adds that little bit of light on them that, that kind of makes it all balanced. Well, and I could have had her turn around. So on the other side, her hair was back and she had this really cool feather thing, but they were having the sweetest moment that I was not going to break it up. I wasn't <laughs> direct them i wanted them to just and she's like freezing so she's got herself she's got her in hands his jacket. inside of his jacket yeah oh i see that let me bring that up again so everyone yeah, can see that's yeah. funny yep. yeah. uh, I, love it. I love it that's so cool you guys good stuff you guys now this one this one's a fun one i was watching this video as well before and i was like what is going on here and then i love the series of images that you guys show so i'm going to play the video i'll let you guys kind of talk through what's going on and then we'll oh. show the resulting images oh, man. i wish you could hear the video can you i i can't one? yeah let me uh absolutely let me let me go back and let me turn the we'll, we'll definitely because she kind of sings a song here and you can hear everyone laughing yeah. and so she She's doing a, what she has a business called Bellagram Telegram, and mm -hmm. it's an old fashioned telegram situation. And she sings custom songs for people. So people hire her to like show up at their mom's house or a coworker's house and sing something. So yeah. we brought her and surprised our couple. Customized a song just for the bride and groom. Yeah. Wow. So this is something that you guys did. It was kind of like a, like a gift that you gave the bride. It was a gift to them. Oh, wow. Yes. Cool. I love the photos too that come with it. I'm going to turn it to the photo and then let okay. me see. Um, I have to do one more change here. Let me just see if I can. Uh, let's see. Well, I think I can play the audio. <laughs> I'm looking for the. Well, here. we can try. Let's do this. All right. I found the audio setting. Let me go ahead and put this on full screen and we'll play it and let it, let it, we can hear what she sings here. Okay. Yay. I love that this is a gift to the couple. That's so cool, you guys. Oh, man. I love that. I, it's, it's such a cool, cool little series. And I, I, we don't have the whole song there. It would have been fun to hear the whole song. But I do want to show the photos that you guys got, which are pretty incredible. Um, so let me bring these up here as well. Uh, and there's a series like five or six here. Gosh, look at that mountain behind them. All right, tell us about these shots, you guys. Oh, man. So that view is considered by some of the most famous Italian poets the, the most beautiful view in the world. It's the Amalfi Coast. Wow. So the southern um, coast of Italy. And this this is the night before their wedding. This is in the crypt. They which called is us where they, the crypt. They had their welcome gathering. It's a very and... old, you know, old convent building, essentially. And now it's a very lovely hotel. Um, yeah. And, and and we decided this was the best moment for this. We'd been going back and forth and back and forth. This is a dear friend of ours from Portland who was born in Rome and was already going to be visiting her father. So I surprised Joss with one of these telegram <laughs> telegrams for our anniversary a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And it started this conversation of, ooh, what if we could do this? And it everything came together, uh -huh. but the couple thought she was our assistant. So she had uh -huh. been with us, meeting the couple, like was on the sailing trip with us, like had done all these like pre-wedding um, yeah. excursions and meetups. And so when this happens, their their expression there is just And they gold. love music to, they're from New Orleans. They yeah. actually brought an entire band from New Orleans to their wedding. <laughs> yes. And so adding another element of music to them, I think was really epic. Yes. Yeah. And being able to have the Magmod uh, grids, and it was just a simple setup with the grids and a, and a quarter CTO gel positioned on our stands in these certain specific areas, because that's a really tight situation. Yeah, you, know, you can't get a you know a, a lighting assistant in there without disrupting everybody. Well, there was also videographers yeah. that were not happy with us, but yeah. <laughs> but the yeah the photojournalistic moment of the of the direction in the directional light turned out really nice, and it was just such a profound moment. They 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 just the, these two are just crying to us with these amazing. Uh, testimonials. They send us videos all the time about how happy yeah. they still are about this entire moment. 
That's so cool. I mean, I'm looking at this this right here, and you can see just how tight that is. So where where did you have your grids? Were they behind those pillars? Is that where they were? Yeah. 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 So there's, we are using more than one light. Oh, totally. Actually, I think both of us had a flash yeah. on our camera. Yeah. Plus okay. we are using one light because it. it was really hard to, to know what was all going to happen as well. Um, and, and yeah, so one of us went to the back and one stayed in the front. I think we were both kind of in the front and then I, I came around and went to the back. But I mean, yeah. you guys look at, I mean, I, okay. So again, I'm looking at this shot and I'm like, you guys are both on different sides here and yet you don't see each other in your shots. So you guys do a really good job staying out of each other's shots. And then <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you can barely see, I don't know. And then the other thing I love is it's not this straight on, uh, you know, light from a flash, like on camera, like you see this great dimension, this light coming from the sides, you know, you're getting, you know, almost like a Rembrandt light or at least a loop light. And it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. It's, it's just so different than just your typical documentary flash photography, you know, the way you guys have even your lights set up. So yeah, I mean, we just find it more interesting to have directional totally. light than, flash on camera which we will use a little of when we need it yeah. um but otherwise we prefer not to but in this that. situation too you're walking into a very very organic moment that you don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. so each of us had our lights in a different spot in case one of our positions of our lights wasn't in the right way so we uh -huh. kind of like you work as, as a as a backup swim buddies in this case yeah uh, as a strategy in case one person isn't in the right position to get it yeah we know we're going to get at least one of them yeah the other, the other thing that, again, this is one of those things that photographers would know this, but like this shot with those mountains in the background, if this, if you were just exposing for them and you didn't have flash on them, I'm guessing that background would have been white. Yeah. You know, totally. it looks like oh. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, it would be very challenging to yeah. get any, anything really. Um, you wouldn't see where you are and uh, I don't, I feel like it would be flat. It yeah. would be super flat. And yeah, the backdrop would yeah. have to be blown out. Yeah. I think that would defeat the entire purpose, man. Yeah. That's so beautiful. So, so pretty. Yeah. All right. So this next one is funny when I looked at it. In fact, I'm going to pull it up here. When I saw this, I was like, Oh, they're in a, they're in a limo. <laughs> like, that's what, that's and then I played the video and I was like, what the heck? This is crazy. You guys, your Our adventures people. and all your weddings and stuff are insane. So tell us what's going on here. Oh man. Okay. So we're in Lake Como. We're, now we're in Northern Italy. We're in Northern Italy. We're, we just come from Amafi. We're in Lake Como uh -huh. and we're on one of the two uh, James Bond red boats that the are wooden wood boat. red the wooden boats taxis. that are going past George Clooney's home right there. Oh, <laughs> and I'm on the front of the boat getting slammed with all the waves because it's windy. It's crazy. Uh -huh. It was actually not a calm lake moment. We almost couldn't get on the boats. We were going to have to really? move to buses because it was choppy. It was like this weird storm. It's a lake, totally. but it was like choppy ocean lake and windy and crazy. And so I'm on one of the other boats. Joss went on this boat. And um, yeah, we, we yeah. both got very wet, actually. Yeah. And I'm trying to like, I'm looking at the couple there, like, how am I going to possibly light them up? Uh -huh. You know? I am literally being thrown off the front of the boat, down, up, down. My cameras are flying all the place. My lights are always. So I put a clamp to the right side of the couple because okay. I wanted it to be from right to left hitting them. And it was a really solid vice cramp. It's a six inch vice cramp. It's a little bit larger than your average clamp, but it's worth yeah. bringing for these specific. You have moments. to check it or else they'll take it from you if you put it in your carrying. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I've, just, I've got a grid. And a, a, you know, a quarter CTL is kind of my go-to. Pointed right at the couple, and then I'm in the front of the boat with my, with my, <laughs> you know, holding on for dear life as I'm shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. Like I literally shot probably a hundred photos of this one moment wow. to get this one shot. Here yeah. it is. Yeah. Look at this. The, you know, the, the 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 bridal car. You know, I wanted to get the driver in the shot. Maybe he's a little bit warped because I got a 16 millimeter lens, but that's all I had to work with. So, but. Uh. I just wanted to get the the driver, you know, and then the the bridal party, and then light them up, 
And there was a moment where they lo- both lo- looked at each other laughing. I think they were, I think they were laughing about how I was. They were laughing at you. Thrown probably. all over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it turned out it turned out pretty good. And I also exposed for the background. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see all which, the water flying everywhere. Which is everywhere. different, right? Because the sun, the Lake Como is just multiple lakes, essentially that area. And at one point, you could be seeing a sunset, and you can see there's hot light on those behind hills, but then the rest is in the shadow yeah, because yeah. of the way the sun has moved. Yeah, really challenging, like situations to photograph. Actually, yeah. I, I can tell that it, it, it's very, yeah, it's very. Uh, got to have a lot of dynamic range and the only way to really capture that is by using flash and things like that you gotta bring in flash or else everything's gonna be blown out or really dark yeah yeah i think i wrote down the the settings at 6.3 okay uh it was a 16 millimeter and 100 you know 200th of a second and at 200 iso wow do you know what's what's the name i have a feeling some people are going to be asking what the name of those vice grips are that you use uh, in order to hold the flash you know Get them at our local camera shop. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's like it, it, they're about. It's a, it, yeah. It's just not a. It's a four inch one. And but we have a, a six. A, inch. It looks like a wow. like a stud about this long, and then and it has it's got like these foam two, rubber so foam that it rubber, doesn't yeah. scratch whatever but you're the, touching. The, clamp, the the kind of like <laughs> the, this rotating uh, handle on it that gives it a really solid grip on where what you put it on. I noticed that the smaller clamps, sometimes you don't have a spot to clamp it anywhere, or it might not hold on strong enough. Yeah. Well, because so, the thing you're trying to attach is thick. So it's bigger than that. Yeah. Okay. But it's this. like that. Yeah. It's this like is what I keep in my bag just for, you know, if I want to attach it to like a, like a, like yeah. a bowl from a DJ or something like that, if I don't See, want to. I would, I want that one, Joss. The other <laughs> one is too heavy for me to carry around. This one is sort of the well, no, in between. We have one. Like that? Like, yeah, we have one like that. Yeah. We got but this is ones. so. This is what you use, just bigger, basically. Yes, it's bigger. Yeah. It's similar, but it's it, way bulk. It's like it doesn't look like it's for camera. I can always get it on a door jam. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, like thick. Cool. You can do like big pieces of wood, or um, yeah. And we do have a smaller one, but I don't have one like that. I want that. Yeah. <laughs> John's like, we have it, babe. <laughs> No, it's in his back. <laughs> it's in his back. I love it. <laughs> so cool, you guys. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that because that is super interesting. And I, you know, and hopefully people can find other ways of being able to use. I, I hope I'm never on a boat getting thrown around. I'm, I'm going to pass on that part. But the image is amazing. So it was the day before the wedding. I get beat up before the actual Me big 16-hour day and wedding. And I get you know? really, I get really like car sick and motion sick. And I was with um, the parents. So I had the parents' boat. And they almost told us we weren't going to go. We were the last boat. Oh, and they were like, yeah, you're not going to be able to go. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> the parents <laughs> and I are not coming? Um, yes. So. Yeah. So this is a late coma <laughs> wedding. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there's so much we could share if you look oh, at the full blog photo. post. But there's yeah, another, there's, there's, there's the another, next one yeah, is, the next image is leading up. Is the same the, wedding. The one? Mm-hmm. Is that yeah. the one? Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's pull it up actually. I think uh, the other thing I would just mention is you'd mentioned there's so much. I bet, you know, if you guys, if you're not already following them, be sure to go follow them. And then you can see a lot of their adventures and things on Instagram. So um, so this is the same couple then. Yep. Yes. Yep. This yeah. is the night of the wedding. Yeah. And this here, we're using the mag beam. And our assistant is actually trying to do the behind the scenes and hold that mag beam <laughs> up at the same time. So it's a little bit blurry, but... They, the couple, they, they're one of the things that they really wanted was get this epic cake Which shot. was a, mm-hmm. so the fireworks are a surprise. Their guests did not know there were going to okay. be fireworks. They just invited everybody out for the cake cutting. Yeah. So the fireworks were a surprise. This is a very important photo for them. Um, and we're where, using more than and just. And I'm right there. Yeah. Well, it That's looks, you and I'm shooting, but we're both shooting kind of in the same kind of area because it was the best angle and we needed to make sure that we got it so both of us are working with our lighting assistant and we're both photographing it because we got to get it it's yeah and, very and there's important. more than one light here going on too there's another mm-hmm. light to the left that was kind of like kind of back lighting or side lighting yeah. the, the cake yeah. also yeah um, so the, or actually it was, point, it was pointed at the cake and then the, and then she's pointing at the couple yeah Let's bring up the image. Ah, it's so pretty, you guys. 
Yeah, and Tree caught this photo, and it was like when I first looked at it, I was like, "What?" You know, because the 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 fireworks are bursting out of the top of the cake, which yeah. make it look oh, like a snow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we added a little bit of fireworks from another photo, but the fact that it's coming out of the cake, yeah, is just yeah. crazy. And you know, you know, they love this. I find I find when I do um, fireworks shots, oftentimes I'll grab a bunch of shots and then I can take a little bit of because it, it basically you want it to look like the finale anyways, right? Because totally. it's like firework, firework, firework. Yeah. And at the finale, you get like a bunch, but it becomes almost too cluttered in the sky. So um, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking fireworks from frame four and putting it with frame eight and you know no, <laughs> you kind of have to to make to like fill the scene otherwise you're like oh nice one firework there but i love i love i didn't even it's so interesting i didn't even notice the like i didn't it didn't stick out to me i just thought it was part of the cake like the fireworks coming out of the cake that's so cool i love that yeah i just loved how kate and Keegan, they're their, that's their names, so was just in this moment of cheersing. And everybody behind us, of course, is just yelling at the top of their lungs. And, and they happened to turn around, like, is that first? Um, they had started, the, the fireworks were, like, started at slightly the wrong time. Like, they wanted to <laughs> cut into the cake and have the fireworks start. But, of course, nothing works that perfectly. That would be too too good and, and so there was this little bit of delay which they got over really quickly because all their people started freaking out and screaming and that's when they turned around and and you know cheers to everybody so oh, yeah. yeah i love it i love it guys what about i've never seen anything that, that big ever in my the, life the italians but... love to do these like crazy cakes it's just really? part of the tradition yeah wow that, that was the usual that's for sure yeah. so they get bigger I'm going to pull this up here, and I love how it looks like you guys are, are once again climbing up in elevations and using some cool light fixtures or something happening in here. Tell us about this one. Yeah, this is the a local venue. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called the Exchange Ballroom, and they have this beautiful art installation that's glass, clear glass, mm -hmm. but has okay. this like beveled um, texture to it. And, you know, we were like, gosh, if we could just you know, flash this and, and still the, so the, the, the dance floor is right there, essentially yeah. just off to the side from them. And instead of taking them out in a way for their night photo, we were like, well, I think we can use this right here and have it just be them and have it be a real moment. Um, and you can yeah. see how we lit up the tree lit up the, the light or the, the glass with the blue gel yep. to the far right hand side. And I was lighting her lighting assistant at the time, uh, and I used a sphere with a grid mm -hmm. to the left to light them up. Yeah. I, I noticed um, it looks like you have a piece of glass down here. Are you doing a reflection type of thing? Or is that I just was playing around with it just to see. Um, in the end, we, I didn't need it. Okay. Yeah. Let's pull yep. the image. Oh, you guys. This is so pretty. What a cool. Yeah. Image. So, uh, you know, because we were using the grid and we're kind of, we wanted the background to disappear. Yeah. Even though there's like people everywhere and like, you know, cement floor and tables and all the chaos of the wedding. Um, we wanted all of that to disappear. So that is what you can do when you use lights. Yeah, the cool thing is, is that they were in a real moment. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a really important uh, criteria for us to follow when we're photographing is to, you know, get behind, get, you know, the, 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 the technical aspect is one thing, but making sure that they're having this real moment so that when they look at this photo, they remember the feeling and the experience that they had. Yeah. And Instead of being they're, staged. They're, yeah. They're kind of having a second dance here, you know, yeah. with, with all of the music and the people around them and they're, they're in their moment. That's so cool. And so in order to, the modifier you used was a, a grid. Is that right? Just a mad grid on a, on a flash? I was a sphere. Grid. A mad grid with a sphere. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes so, we use that. So we wanted to soften the light a little bit around them. And then you use the blue gel on the foreground. I think we had two blue gels, actually. Two? Okay. I think I hit it. Or no, we just have the one down here. on this. So this is like a little landing. You come into the ballroom mm -hmm. on this landing, and then there's stairs going down. Yeah. Um, so we set the, yeah, the I think we put the flash on like a little foot, maybe. Or there was like a little ledge. Uh -huh. And so it's, it's coming from my camera right, basically. That's so cool. I was going to try yeah. to play it again, but for some reason it's not letting me hit the play button. But yeah, it, that's that. Gosh, 
That's so cool, you guys. I just love that. Yeah. So inventive, so creative. Good stuff. <laughs> Speaking of Josh yeah. getting bounced around on a boat, <laughs> what are you doing here? A boat, right? <laughs> yeah, this is the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. This is uh, wow. during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had, they actually got married on two different boats. So their guests are on, on one boat and then they're on a, on a separate boat. But uh, this, not while we were like out in open water. They were moored. But we this here that. is the, uh, the mag box. Mm -hmm. And we've got two 8200 Godox flashes in there. And okay. one of their, I think their uncle is holding it for us yeah Thank he's holding thankfully. it thankfully that took a heroic act to hold yeah. that up and because this is the sailboat that they own and they live on yeah and wow. it's so epic this sailboat it's a it, has, it, has, it has three showers on this boat <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome we are so all over the place in this thing and it they live a really interesting lifestyle that's um, for sure but we wanted to make sure we got this guy. So there, we we had this. They they their uncle had this. Um, they call it a chase boat. So mm -hmm. I'm on the chase boat, and we can maneuver around this boat now. So now we we've, we've got you know it, part of the challenge of being on a boat is how do you get far enough back to shoot the boat, particularly yeah. with a flash to light up yeah, the sky so, like that. So we had made this plan with the family, and they were like, "Well, why don't we just have a chase boat?" So. Chase boat chase follows boat. us. Joss gets on the chase boat, mm -hmm. and the water's not like flat. You know, you no. can kind of see <laughs> that in the yeah. Joss is on the front, um, and thankfully the uncle is there to hold the big heavy light for yeah. us. And then I'm attempting. I'm still on the catamaran, and I'm attempting to stay out of Joss's way, but also grab anything that I can get of them, yeah. um, just yeah. to have different imagery. Yeah. Um, cause you were, you were using the same channel. I was using the same channel, using the same light. Yeah. Um, but you know, trying not to steal all the power. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that so was, that was, so exposing for the, for the hot light here for the sky was really important. I think it was at, at actually F 11. Oh, wow. So that it had more depth. Right. And then, so we had to crank up the power on that flash to like a 16th or maybe an eighth power. Mm -hmm. And then it was shot at ISO 100 uh 200th of a second and um it you know we pulled it off with probably about five or six shots that's so and, cool so, yeah and you know having that chase boat you know to be able to position us so that you know you can maneuver so that the couple is right in the brightest part of the sky yeah because so because your eyes go to the brightest part of the whole frame right yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah anyone who's watched these shows we've talked about that a few times where you know, it's the sharpness, contrast, brightness. Those are kind of the things that draw your eyes in. And so, yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yeah. And it's interesting because if you if, if you go back and look at that, uh, the video of you on the boat, it does not look dark. I mean, it's like, you know, but by using F11 and lowering your ISO and everything else, you're really, yeah. really contrast into the sky and, and the brightness right around them. I so mean, you just have so much creative flexibility when you introduce light mm -hmm. and and can control your light and manipulate it. Yeah. You just have so much you can do. That's so true. Yeah. So true. And if, it was, if they were only silhouetted, it wouldn't have been the same, right? Lighting them up with that no. with that mag box was everything. I mean, um, they printed that huge oh, yeah. for the for their house that they yeah. now are actually living yeah. in more because they have yeah. kids. That's cool. <laughs> That's really, really cool. I think this next set, I think we have a couple um, dance shots. I think maybe their first dance. And I, I know there's this one here. And then I think we might have a few others that follow it. But tell us tell us about this one here. Well, this is actually the venue that we'll be hosting our workshop at. Uh, it's called uh, the Soapbox Hut. And it's at the top of Mount Hood. Not all the way to the top, but at like 7,000 feet. It's above Timberline Lodge, which is the historical landmark. And... It's a small venue. It's very Game of Thrones, like in the north. It's rock flooring and made out of wood mm -hmm. and a lot of rock. And this is, you know, th them with their 40 loved ones. And yeah, and this series of photos is a kind of a combination of tree and my shots. Mm -hmm. So tree's getting these really nice directional lights, like almost like a 90 degree angle, which is kind yeah. of like the angle that we prefer with off camera flash which kind of adds more drama and dimension yeah. to the 
And then this third one I got, uh, I put the, I had the flash behind them. Yeah. And I also put pointed a flash at the guest. Yep. So two flashes, one right behind them, pretty low, right below, kind of right where their kind of their waists are pointing up. You can almost see that. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can see that one guy's face right in between yeah. them. And having that separation between them is really important. And, and they're kind of in this moment of laughing. And, yeah. and it, it was lucky because it bounced off of their faces. It kind of like did this ping pong of light between their faces to, well, the to light up their faces. Well, the white dress also helps. White dress yeah. becomes a natural reflector. That's true. It does help out. Yeah. That's really cool. I love that. I love that series. I, I think um, there's another one that we're going to talk about here shortly where it actually shows. And it's, it's really cool to see when you have two shooters both using flash, how you can create different pieces of art really um while the same action is happening it's really quite fun Me. Yeah. yeah is there do you guys have a particular modifier you like to use during uh dances like do you normally go to that mag grid mag sphere just the mag sphere what do you typically you know, use? we it really depends on if we have an assistant with us mm -hmm. and what the dance floor like space mm -hmm. is like so because true. we've been using the beam a lot just to get out of everyone's way. Uh, it's a little safer than just like having light stands on the dance floor. And that beam throws it, it's correct good. me if I'm wrong, uh, Trevor, but I think it throws it two and a half times further than your average flash, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know the exact measurement on on the the power output, but it certainly does. It focuses your light so that your light is going, and I, you know, it's it has that Fresnel lens on the front. And so it's kind of like yeah. a light tower, right? Or a, yeah. yeah, light lighthouse <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I have used it in those situations where if you can if you have like a big room for example and you don't want your light stands around the dance floor you move it back and then and then you know point it towards the dance floor it works really well so yeah, yeah so it's incredible i usually pull it about halfway out mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. if i go too far yeah, out fully extended, yeah. and i unless yeah. something like maybe a lighting assistant it's really great when it's full out because then they can really focus that light. But if I don't have a lighting assistant, it's just on a stand, usually about halfway out, it's about a good good position to have it at. Yeah, so yeah. I would say we use the mag beams quite a bit, but also just grid, grid, grid. Yeah. Or double grid sometimes. Or, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, and then we're also trying to light the crowd. You know, we're trying to get a variety, which is why we usually are both photographing dancing, because we know that we're probably going to be able to get different things. Joss has always, you know, loved backlighting. He's like, I want to get a backlit shot. And it's a risky shot. Though. And I'm always just, you know, like trying to show the crowd, show them, yeah. you know, make sure everybody's illuminated, everybody looks good. Um, so, so yeah, this last weekend, those other photos we showed, I was using Magbeam, but you weren't. Right. Yeah. 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 So it just depends. Like yeah. it also just depends yeah. on. That's cool. I don't know. Yeah. I like I have the option though. Cause I remember this, um, uh, this last weekend there was the, we, we lit up the ceremony and I was going to use grids at first and it was in the dark woods, right? The ceremony. And I, at the last minute I pull off the grids and I put on the, the, the beams, which was perfect, perfect for that. for the ceremony. Yeah. Nice. Light up. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, tell us, tell us about this one here, you guys. This one is is crazy awesome. Love it. So do you remember? Yeah. So I remember when um, you shared this on Instagram and everybody was remember. like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. I yeah this is kind of a good situation where we do our homework before the wedding. Mm -hmm. um, kind of experimenting with ideas. Um, one of the, the criteria we have is we always to try something new for every wedding. You know, and, and always write down maybe a new concept or, a, or something that challenges us. And so this one, we decided to play with the light, with the gels. Mm -hmm. And we went to our kitchen um, to start this off the night before. And we started playing around with the mag, um, the, 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 what do you call those? The mag, the, the, the. What are you? That you can create patterns, patterns. Oh, the pattern. <laughs> oh, yes. the, the the mag beam patterns. The uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mag the pattern, beam. The, pattern, the mag patterns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. And, and so we started. I started thinking. Okay, well, I want the color combination of orange and and blue, or red and blue, or somewhere in between is a really good combination of colors. So mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to do that. But I just wanted to kind of start figuring out how to use these patterns a little bit. 
Hmm. And so if you go into the next photo, I think you mm -hmm. can see this is just in our kitchen. We're just playing around and seeing what's happening. Yeah. And it's like, okay, okay, we got the pattern going here, but okay, well, let's start introducing some color to that and see what happens. Yeah. So there's one flash with the pattern on it with the blue gel. And then there's another flash with a double grid with, I think, a, a orange or yeah, a red gel. And so we started playing around here a little bit more and we started, huh? Okay, well, there's a secret little ingredient here we're gonna show here in a second, but how do you get the 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 orbs to the mm. left side of the lens? And then how do you, you know, get an image with those orbs in the distance also? So there's kind of a couple things going on here about depth of field and the, and the settings that we're using here. So And then wanting the couple to be in the part of the frame where there aren't orbs really, or, or yeah. a small amount of orbs. Yeah, so right here is starting to come together. I was like, ooh, this is cool. So we got a backlight to, to create this silhouette. And we also have the patterns with color, but then we also have these orbs on the lens, coming off the lens flare. Mm. And so it's like, okay, we, this is kind of theoretically, huh, this is kind of working. How can we play this with this uh, on the wedding day? And so when it came to the end of the night after a very long day, all the, Pretty the, much couple, everyone the, the couple wanted everybody to leave so that uh -huh. we, they had a little bit of time with us to play around with lights. Yeah. And that was our planning session. And so uh -huh. we were packing and they were all, all everybody's gone. So we had a, this. We open, had time open, we to had set time. this up and really right? practice while everyone was leaving, which was awesome because it, it was still not fully realized yet. Yeah, Is so that what trick, we're looking at here? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're looking at here then? Is yeah. that? Is yeah, that yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's important to find, I think, a white wall or, you know, a clean, clean wall that you can work with. And then when you have a white wall, you can add color to it. And yeah. it doesn't absorb the color. Yeah. And so in this case, we have three flashes. We have one with the the mag patterns. Mm -hmm. I know there's another one. That. <laughs> and it's shooting at the wall, creating the patterns. Okay. And I think this one here. Yeah. And yeah. Then, and then there's another one at the pointed directly at the back wall, which is the is the, actually the red flash uh, with a grid on it because I want it to be narrowed down that focus against the wall. Hmm. And the, the, the third flash actually is, is, pointed is, at is the about lens. six inches from the left side of the, the lens. And this is a 24, film, 24 millimeter lens. Uh -huh. That flash is specifically pointed directly off to the left side of the, of the, of the, the lens because we wanted it to, it to be close to the lens with a grid on it so that it would be very narrow focused on that part of the lens. Yeah. But yeah. So, well, I was just yeah. going to say that we've never shared the behind the scenes of this one. Um, and there's two videos, I think, that show exactly what's happening. And I think people started to figure it out on their own. They were like, hmm. Yeah, we wanted, I wanted to, I think we wanted to create a kind of a conversation to see what, what, what people's thoughts were. Yeah. And so here in this video, we've expanded the video. So you can mm -hmm. see those three flashes working. We've got it on a tripod too. But as you, as you, as the flat as the video goes here, you'll notice that I go around the whole thing, pull out a bottle of water, and a hold spray bottle. My my, yeah. my my hand flat against the middle of the lens, and then shoot only the the right side of the twenty four millimeter uh, glass with water yeah, yeah. water droplets. So it's this really fine mist spray, and that's what gives the the side orbs. So let, let me see here. Let me let me go back. Oh, okay. So then we got this is our final image. <laughs> oh, you guys, this is crazy, ridiculous. It's so beautiful. I love that. We were really lucky that the the couple had such great profiles. And they were literally um, talking about their day the whole time. They yeah. were like downloading all the experiences, all the things that happened. They were just in their own world. They knew we were being all techie and creative and weird over yeah. here and they were into it, but they were really just into themselves and we really didn't have to do anything with them. We just, they just needed to stand there for a little while while we created it. Yeah. That's, that's so beautiful. You guys, such yeah. a cool shot. Really, really cool shot. I mean, we took both of us to look at the back of that lens too when we're when we're shooting it. We're like, "What do you think?" The what back do you think? of the like, camera. Our back of the camera, like you know, like it, it took like four, you know, two sets of eyes to really 
figure that out at the end. A right? lot of the photos sometimes are like that. Yeah. The really experimental, creative, especially night shot photos uh -huh. are often collaborative because there's a lot going on and and they get better when you put two heads on it usually. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Tell us about this one right here. Aww, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so this is back to the, the Silcox hut where we're thinking of doing the, uh, we're gonna do the, the winter wedding uh, workshop. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very interesting couple because uh, Taylor, who's on the left, uh, is marrying Jackson on the right, and all of his family came over from Rwanda. Not mm. a, like a large group of them from mm -hmm. came from Rwanda up to Mount Hood in, here in Oregon. Wow. And they're extremely philosophical, deep, connected, spiritual. super happy, spiritual, joyous people all of them and they all sing together like we were in the hot tub the night before singing with everybody it was crazy but uh, here we are up at the at the welcome gathering and they all have candles and they're all sitting together and they decided to actually pray for taylor and jackson in this moment it was, you could feel it it was so powerful well they had seen another photo of ours that we had photographed kind of similar, at, yeah. at silcox that the, it's it's like a similar concept but not even in it doesn't look the same necessarily. It's yeah. just a similar idea, which is candles in a space with the couple. Yeah. Um, but we lit Taylor and Jackson in this one. Yeah. So our lighting assistant was there at the time and we put a we put a mag snoot on mm -hmm. uh camera right, oh way up high, holding it super high, pointing reaching left. out over those. It's people. camera left. Camera it's camera left. You camera can right. see the light. Camera right. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, you're right. Because we're lighting her. We yeah. always light her. Yeah. And <laughs> pointing down right at them. And and this is a 24 millimeter lens again. And I think we had it on a tripod because it was such low light with that ambient light. Yeah. Um, but getting the people like waiting for that moment, you could see like the guy on the right hand side, he's lifting his head up. You know, people are in a very contemplative mood. People in the background also are like some of like an uncle back there singing or, or no, he's not singing, he's praying. He's, he's praying out loud. He's leading the prayer. And yeah. It was such a special moment, but the the, the depth once again. We're looking, we're always looking for depth yeah. and moment and precision of light. I love how throughout this, you guys have highlighted quite a few different modifiers. Like you mentioned here, this was the mag snoot, and it's like you guys are are literally going to whatever instead of having one thing that you just go to every time. It's like, what is the best tool? You know, is it the mag yes. mag snoot, the mag box, the mag yes. mag mod XL? Like, what is it? You know. Um, and right. I think I think these next series of photos, I think it's the same couple. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is their wedding day now, the next day. So and I know there, there's a bunch of photos here. Um, so tell tell us about kind of what was going on and kind of what was going through your mind as, as I'll kind of flip through some of these. Well, <laughs> it's first dance. Yeah, we're both shooting. This is a, this okay. is a collection of both of our shots. Yeah. Um, I'm going for the backlight. Uh, I've got an 85 1.2 lens on. And our assistant is backlighting for him. So she's on the ground, actually. She's like down here yeah. with the oh, mag wow. beam, just trying to get in the right position. They're moving around a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. And in this particular shot, okay, so you back up one, back uh -huh. up two, actually. Here we miss shot. We miss, you know, she's flaring, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the, one of the key things of, with teamwork is always keeping our eyes on each other in the middle of these moments. It's, just, it's like a lighting assistant. It's so easy to get caught up in the moment and get all emotionally evolved. Yeah. But look at each other, keeping our eyes on each other so that the photographer can communicate to the assistant where to move the light mm -hmm. is super critical because that moment's happening. It's fleeting, fleeting in, well, in and fractions of a see, second. They can see. It's just that sometimes the couple dip when you don't know they're going to dip. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I think that that uh, I think that shot was a 2.2 2 F. F two point two. So this is when they came back up, which is a rare yeah. depth of field to capture in such a high speed moment. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you decide to shoot that aperture? I think for I, dancing? I, I. It just what happened. I, it just it just what happened. But I was we were shooting so fast, rapid fire during this moment. Yeah. And Taylor's expressions were so huge, so full of joy. Uh, but I like I, what I really like is the, is all the I think there was a wind, a door open, and some of the, the, snow, of the particles. snow particles were coming into the into the scene, being backlit. Um, so cool! By the flash, yeah, yeah. I love that, you guys. 
so so cool and i love how you can kind of see that series it's like your shoot 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 and then you get that one kind of magical shot you know you got the other shots that document everything and it's still really cool lighting and stuff and then you get the one that like you said, you get this, it's almost like the fairy dust. <laughs> you get everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and again, like she's one big reflector. She's also super fair skin, but wearing that white dress yeah. is bouncing that light into him as well. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And that was that mag beam again. And so our assistant, Alex, uh, she was behind uh, them low, really low, but far enough back away from the movement so that she could focus that light. Yeah. Love it. Love it, love it. Yeah. What about this one here? This is uh, the old famous cigar shots. It looks like. Uh, oh yeah, this was tough. This was like pitch black. There was no light really. This is the Villa, the Chimbrone, well, the Ravello. This is at another venue just down the way from Villa Chimbrone, Villa yeah. Eva. And they had brought all these cigars. It was super important. But where they were choosing to stand and smoke them, there was no light. <laughs> I was literally in the dark. Uh -huh. And so pulling any ambient ambient light I had is why that that backdrop is a tiny bit green. Okay. I don't remember it being up light, but um maybe it was just from the building. And this is, you know, the groom with her father and his son. So this is a these are like her, the bride's the three important men yeah. also. Yeah, uh, yeah. and a very important moment for the groom and yeah. yeah i had a i had to really work that that was that was not easy because you're just in the dark and you don't you can't really see what's happening um totally. hard to focus yeah. Too. yeah but i think you backlit riley yep and then it bounced over and hit mm -hmm. the dad well i angled it slightly too and i set it far enough away so you kept running back to adjust the the light stand mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's why cool. i took so long i love it I love it. I love it. And then we have this one here. It looks like there are some fire dancers or something happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah, this is at the Merv Griffin Estate. Um, Down in Indio, like Palm Springs Palm area. Palm Springs, yeah. Wasn't this, this the last photo? This is the very, very last photo. And they yeah. had a circus wedding. And at the end, you know, we always like to get a final epic shot. And these fire dancers are everywhere. You know, first of all, the bride, oh. the bride, the bride flew in on silks. In the middle of dance floor, but that's a whole other story. But yeah, but at the end here, you know, here we have these fire dancers everywhere, and 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 the whole all the guests are outside. Mm -hmm. So how do you get the guests and the couple and the fire all in one shot? And man, this was a this is a moment that we kind of just invited everybody to come come over and celebrate Courtney and Brian here. Yeah, and I think yeah you know, we had uh, it was a, actually a it was a soft box to the left side, a mag box. Okay. Because we wanted to light them up because his blue suit was just awesome. And it was still directional. It's like pretty high at, coming out of 45. But we wanted them. to be able to light their whole bodies. And sometimes yeah. with the grid, you don't get that. Or if you're yeah. just using the mag sphere, you're just, you're lighting the ground too much. There's like, you know, different tool for different purposes. But the XL would right. be perfect for this. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would make um, sense. But, but the mag box was, that was our tool of choice at the time. And, you know, exposing for the flames is really important to get kind of get that in your head in the middle of this crazy moment is you always want to start off with ex get the right exposure. Right. So how do you expose to the flames and then how do you adjust the power of the flash? Mm. And then it, it was a it was a lucky uh, by by luck that that softbox lit up the 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 guests also. Yeah, there was a little spillover, which is a wonderful addition to this photo. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of like it as as you look at it, it looks like a heart. The, mm -hmm. the shape the the, the fire create in their bellies oh, yeah. create this shape of a heart. We didn't totally see that I, in I, that I moment until that, afterward. Other people told us that. Like, yeah, I guess it that's that's one of those happy accidents, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Well, guys, I think we're close to finishing up here, but there's a, there's a couple more here. It looks like maybe, um, tell, tell okay. us about what's going on. Well, this is really just showing the space. Mm -hmm. So we were photographing in this interesting industrial area south of LA. Mm -hmm. Really wasn't much. There was cars everywhere, all over the street. We kept trying to find a place to go to get a last shot with them. And in the end, we were like, we got to stay inside. And so 
why why we're showing you this is because of that painting behind them <laughs> Got it. because that's what we end up using for the last shot yeah this is the end of the night and there is absolutely nowhere yeah. to go to get a creative shot of so them. we're working with what we got i mean you know like all the magmod tools are just i mean they're magic and <laughs> and uh but sometimes you're still like what am i gonna do you know like i went yeah. up on the rough there's nowhere in the rooftop. No, the streets there's, were full the of cars. The streets are full of cars. The everybody's dancing in every corner of the whole place. Yeah. And so I remember we sometimes we take shots in our camera with kind of as as little notes almost to go back to and go, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, that we took that shot because we saw that picture there. Yeah. What could we do with that picture? Is the question. Yeah. So then we were like, okay, well this is what we got, and actually this could be really cool. We just have to, you know, light it the way we want and then get them in the negative space which it's a little hard to find negative space in this yeah but also do they really need to be in that much negative space maybe it's this abstract look which is what the painting is makes sense and they're these this couple's really super funky so they wanted something crazy funky right? yeah so that was going in, in our heads we're like we got to create something funky here so the trick of this was is that okay the painting's in front of us right so we're shooting at the painting, but there's a blank wall behind us, which is a which which is a a, a clean white wall. Okay. We took a piece of glass out of a picture frame, <laughs> used the glass in front of the camera, so you can see through the glass. Yeah. But if you look really closely in that reflection of the glass, you can also see the wall behind you. Yeah. So now we're looking through uh, the glass at the picture. But at the same time, we could get their reflection with the red wall that we lit up with a red gel on a white wall. Wow. Their silhouette is now overlaid through that piece of glass looking in on this on the picture itself. And we also added a blue gel to the right hand side with a grid, a double grid, because we wanted to separate the blue from the red and not bleed it too much. That is so cool, you guys. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. yeah. It does. It does. It's the just challenge it, this is okay. getting focus. Yeah. So you have to put a phone up to one of their chins. The color, the the couple usually has to hold a phone, or mm -hmm. we have an assistant or one of us that goes and lights them. You get the focus, yeah. then they step out, move the light. Yeah, because yeah, you're you're holding that reflection, and then you're trying to grab the focus. Because if you don't grab focus, you're you're you're, yeah. you're out of luck. Yeah. That so, a patient couple, but we did test. We always test these shots before we ever bring our couple in we've we've sort of gotten it then we bring them in so that it's more authentic for them and we're not trying to work technology and and, and like have them sit around while we're moving right all these things around yeah. And so, yeah. yeah yeah well i just i love how creative throughout this whole uh chat that we've had which uh, i think this might be one of our longest how i shot it but there's just so much stuff i mean and this, this last hour that we've spent together, there's so many, like I said, different tools and little tips and things that you guys have shared. Just, I mean, between, you know, how to mount your flashes to stuff, to, to using glass and, and, and wine glasses. I mean, you name it. Like you guys have shared so much. So this has been really enlightening. I really appreciate you guys taking this time with me and with everybody else that is watching this episode. So thank Thanks. you guys. Thank you yeah, so much, thank Trevor. you. It's so nice to hang out with you for a little bit. It's yeah, so powerful absolutely. to collaborate and, and actually have moments uh, to, to brainstorm ideas and learn. You know, the subtle the subtle differences can make a big difference. Yeah. Yes. Guys, make sure to go follow them. Go check them out. Joss and Tree, J-O-S-A-N-D-T-R-E-E. -E, and then also their website, jossandtree.com. Um, click on their little workshop or education section, I think is what it was, and then find their workshop yeah. there. When you guys have more information about it, when you have your dates and everything settled down, let me know and we'll, we'll make sure we get that out to the Magmon community as well. Perfect. Awesome. It's going to be soon. Maybe yeah. Soon. Thanks, Trevor. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Justin Tree. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, if you comment below, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, I'm sure I can happy to help out. And I'm sure Justin Tree would be happy to lend a hand as well. So, sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Appreciate Bye. it. Take care. <laughs>